The best part about real estate investing, in my opinion, is being able to borrow money from other people for deals that I get to own. That is a game changer because that means I don't have to have a whole bunch of money to actually get started. And when I first got started in investing in real estate, I didn't use my own money and I was able to buy a six unit apartment building. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to leverage money properly so that you don't go bust. If you go bust, you got to start all over and I don't want that for you guys. So stay tuned in this video. I'm going to show you guys how to borrow money the right way so that you can invest for years and 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 years. Hey guys, I'm Hone. Welcome to the Hone Zone where we multiply the assets that you own. And I've been an investor for about 11 years and I've shown hundreds of people, maybe thousands at this point, how to become an investor and how to use other people's money so that they can get started. The danger though is if you borrow other people's money to do your deals, you gotta make sure that you're able to pay them back. Otherwise, like I said in the intro, you might go bust. Back in 2008, when a lot of people went bust, the reason they went bust is because they borrowed money and they couldn't pay it back. In 2008, I had a property, but I continued to pay my loan, so I didn't go bust, and here I am still investing today. Now granted, the property that I had in 2008 that I kept on paying on was the house that I lived in, but still, that's an example of how as long as you pay your loans, you should be in good shape, and I said should. All right, guys, let's go to the blackboard here. And what we're going to talk about is leverage. So here's leverage. Let's say you had a property. It's worth $200,000. And that's what we call the after repair value. And let's say that you got a loan for $130,000. That means that you borrowed 65% of the value. So that's a 65% loan to value. So far, so good, right? Some people would say that you are not over leveraged because you are at 65% loan to value, meaning that if things went wrong, you could sell the property and pay off the loan pretty easily. Even if the value dropped from $200,000 to $190 or $180, even if you sold at those prices, you can pay off the $130 pretty easily. 65% loan to value, a lot of people would say, keeps you pretty safe. Now, my question for you though is, what if, what if you had a loan for, let's say 190,000? What is that a LTV of? I don't know, I don't even have to do the math, right? But let's say that's close to like 90 or 95%. I think it's like 95% actually, right? So let's say that's 95% loan to value. Are you leveraged? Are you over leveraged? Are you safe? Let's talk about it. If you couldn't pay back that $190,000 loan, then one of the things you can do is sell your property. and even though the property is worth $200,000, when you go to sell it, you're gonna have closing costs, transfer taxes, and a whole bunch of other things. You might not walk away with 190 after paying all those fees. So you might not be able to pay the 190, meaning you're gonna to have to come out of pocket to pay off the loan even after you sell the house. To a lot of people, that can be considered over leveraged. And that might be what they mean when you're borrowing money and they're like, hey, you're over leveraged. If they're actually looking at your numbers, then this might be a scenario where you're over leveraged. They might look at the other scenario where you're borrowing 130 and say, oh, you're not over leveraged, right? So this is one way to ch check whether you are over leveraged or not. If you had to sell the asset, could you pay off the debt that you currently have? Now, I'm gonna show you another way though, how to check whether you're over leveraged or not. And it is, to look at the loan and the actual interest payments that you make every single month. So here's another scenario. You're still borrowing $190,000 loan, right? Here's the loan. The property's worth $200,000. Now what I'm gonna look at is what is the actual monthly payment? And it's $1,000 a month. Where people get in trouble is when they can't pay the $100,000, or I'm sorry, the $1,000 a month loan payment. So if the property that you have brings in $1,600 a month, and then you had some expenses, let's say you had to pay $400 in expenses towards taxes, insurance, utilities, maintenance, whatever, then what you're left with is $1,200. So now you have $1,200 and net operating income, and you take that $1,200 and you divide it by the 1,000. What you're gonna end up with is what they call your debt service coverage ratio. I want you guys to learn that because it'll make you sound really professional when you actually go talk to a bank or any kind of lender who knows what they're talking about. They're gonna look, what is your debt service coverage ratio? So this is how you calculate it. You take your NOI and you divide it by what the bank is gonna require or your lender is gonna require that $1,000. You divide the two and then here, in this case, it's a 1.2 debt service coverage ratio. So what does that mean? 
that means that your NOI is 20% over what you're paying. So even though we're super, super tight at the $190,000 loan in terms of selling the property to pay off the, the debt, we're not super tight when it comes to actually paying the monthly payments. So let's take this example and make it extreme. Let's stretch it a little bit. All right, so I changed the example just a little bit. And instead of the ARV being $200,000, I made it $150,000. We are negative $40,000 in this deal. We are upside down by negative $40,000. We owe too much money, but we are still bringing in $1,200 in net operating income to pay for the $1,000 monthly payment. We still have that 1.2 debt service coverage ratio. Now the question is, are we over leveraged? Well, yes, in a sense, because we owe way too much money for the property. But if we can do this for a long enough time, hopefully real estate values go way, 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 way up. And then we're back to square one, because if this value eventually, let's say goes to $300,000, now you only owe 190. Right? You still owe 190 and maybe over over the five year span that this might take, this 190 goes down to say 150. So now you're at a 50% loan to value, right? Because you only owe 150 on a property that's worth $300,000. That's why cash flow is really key when taking into consideration whether you're over leveraged or not. If you have this kind of cash flow or even more, let's say that this went up and this went up to $1,600 in NOI and now your new debt service coverage ratio is a 1.6, you're even safer, right? So sometimes it doesn't matter what your loan amount is compared to the value. What really matters is the cash flow. Can you continue to pay your loan? If I talk to enough people, sure enough, somebody's gonna say, Hone, what if somebody can't pay their rent? Well, the hope is that you have enough money going into the bucket right here, right? You have enough money going into the bucket that you can still make your payment to the bank. As long as you can make the payment to the bank here, then you're good. In this case, I have these three other properties continuing to put money into the bucket. And if I can continue to pay off the bank every single month, then we're in good shape. And given enough time, eventually I get that house performing again. So don't worry so much about that. Just make sure that you have enough liquidity, meaning enough money in this bucket to continue to pay the bank. Keep paying them, they're happy. You don't have to go bankrupt. They don't have to foreclose on you. Everything is right in the world. Now, what could happen, what could happen is this person, this person, this person, and this person stop paying you. What then, Hone? How do you save yourself then? Well, hopefully this was much bigger. Like you already had this, this liquid bucket already available. Now, it could be cash that you saved, but it also could be a line of credit. And here is the advance play to save your butt. The advance play is to get a partner in the deal. Let's say you're struggling, nobody's paying you rent, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna go bankrupt, I'm gonna go under, someone please help me. If you have good relationships with people and you show them that, hey, this is just a fluke thing and with enough time we can get out of this, right? 2008, the crash of 2008 didn't last forever. And shortly after that, prices went up again. So with that, if you can have a partner who has a bunch of cash, give you cash so that you can continue to make your mortgage payments until things turn around again, what's gonna happen is if you keep holding on to these properties, you get them performing again, at some point, the value of these properties are gonna go way up and then you can sell the properties or refinance them or whatever. And then you can either pay the partner back and get them out of the, the company or you can keep them in and then the partner can continue to collect cash flow along with you. So that is a way to save your butt. So make sure you keep developing relationships with really, really successful people and show them why you could be an asset to them. And sometimes even though you're an asset, you get jammed up and if they can see through that, then great. You have a safety net. All right, so I created this little video just so that you can understand how to borrow money and how to borrow money safely and what to consider. A lot of people get stuck because they don't want to borrow money because they keep hearing Dave Ramsey's voice or somebody else saying that leverage is bad, borrowing money is bad, and you shouldn't do it. It's not that you shouldn't do it. You should do it, but know what you're getting yourself into and know how to keep yourself safe and avoid going bust and always pay back your lenders because your lenders are lending you money that they saved and saved and saved. So it might not come from a bank, 
bank, it might come from a private money lender. So make sure you pay back your lenders so that they can sleep sound and so that you can continue to grow your business. If you are interested in borrowing money and leveraging your way to success and financial freedom, check out the Hone Zone community. Go to honezone.com slash community. There we are going to do, for the month of October, we're going to do the Raising Capital Challenge. In that challenge, I'm going to show you guys how to raise money, how to use lines of credit, how to use hard money loans, how to use all sorts of money, all sorts of leverage, so that you can buy more properties and create more income streams so that you can protect yourself against things that happen financially. Money can solve money-related problems. So when you have a money-related problem, it's good to have a bunch of money. All right, if you like that video, make sure you hit that like button and then hit that subscribe button because here at The Hone Zone, we release new videos every Monday and Wednesday to help you multiply the assets you own. All right, that's it, folks. I'm Hone Tai. Let's multiply.